guys, Miss Miklos here, and um, with this lecture, we are going to talk about how to use your calculator. And um, because of that, most of the lecture I'm actually going to be doing on my computer so you can see my calculator and see the key sequence. Um, but a few things I want to talk about before that. Um, first, there is a note handout that I would suggest getting on MyOLU. And um, in this problem, the very first thing we need to do is we need to determine what is the angle and what is the ratio. And that's important because we do different things when we're finding an angle versus when we're finding a ratio. So I know our angle is always connected to our trig function. And some of you might have been thinking, yeah, of course this is the angle, 45.6 degrees, because it says degrees, but we know that an angle could also be in radians. So the important part is that it is connected to um, the trig function. The trig function is then set equal to what we call our ratio. So that would be 5 over 7. For number 2, cosine, our angle is 53 degrees, and my ratio is 0 0.6018. And um, the whole purpose of doing this one is we are going to see that when we use our calculator, we will often get values that are not exact. So we are going to have to round to the nearest um, four decimal places. And number three, we can definitely see that our angle here is 45 degrees and our ratio is one. So don't let it throw you off that the trig function here is on the right side of the equation. The other thing I want to, us to remember is that tangent I'm sorry, cotangent is 1 over tangent, secant is 1 over cosine, and cosecant is 1 over sine, because we are definitely going to be using those a lot today. The final thing I want to talk about before um, I switch over to my computer is when it's talking about key sequence. What I want you guys to write in these boxes is the keys that you guys are pressing on your calculator. So right now, Pull your calculators out and follow along with me as we learn how to use our calculator. So um, if you guys could go ahead and get your calculators out. Um, the very first thing that I want to do is make sure that we are in the correct mode. So to change our mode, we're going to press the button that says mode. And um, this is the screen that's going to come up. And what we really care about today is if we are in radians or degrees. So if you guys use the arrows, you can move onto whichever mode we need to be in. So if your calculator was in radian mode, we need to change it into degree mode. So move so the flashing um, rectangle box thingy there is on top of degree, which is what we want, and we're going to press enter. Okay, so this has um, put us into degree mode, and I promise you this is really important. Um, if we are not in degree mode, you will get all of your answers incorrect, even if you press the correct buttons. So um, as we move on to pre-calculus, or some of you who are in physics, um, you will need to move back and forth between radians and degrees, depending upon what it's asking you to find. But for this course, we will be fine in degree mode. So now that we've done that, I'm going to press second mode, and that's going to get me back to our original screen. So now that we're in the correct mode, um, we're going to go ahead and do number four. Number four says cosine of 18.7 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead, and if you guys notice, we have a sine button, a cosine button, and a tangent button. We also have sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tan inverse, and you can locate those in blue above those buttons. And we're going to be using those six things today. So um, for number four, first of all, notice we are finding the ratio. Um, we already know what the angle is. We're trying to find the ratio. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to press cosine and then 18.7 equals. So our answer, we're going to round to four decimal places, should be 0.9472. In your key sequence, you guys should write cosine 18.7. 18.7 and then enter. So quite honestly, um, problems of this caliber are going to be this simple. And um, what you will see today is that we really have four different types of problems we're dealing with. This is the first where we are finding the ratio 
um, of an angle with a trig function that is on our calculator. So if we look at number five, number five is very similar. This time it is sine, so I'm pressing sine, of 149.8. And then when I press enter, I'm going to have 0 .5030 as my answer. And one thing you guys may notice is that my cosine values and my sine values should always be less than one. And the reason why that is true is because I know with the ratio, cosine has the hypotenuse in the denominator, and sine also has the hypotenuse in the denominator. So I know the hypotenuse is the biggest side of the triangle, so anything divided by a bigger number is going to be less than one. So um, that's just kind of something we will see, and that could create, um, sometimes we'll get errors in our calculator, and that could be occurring if we're trying to put in a value um, that makes cosine or sine greater than one. Number six is very similar. It says tangent of 49, so I'm pressing tan, 49 and enter and I get 1.1504 because we are rounding to four decimal places. Um, with tangent we will see the numbers kind of be all over the place because there is no limitation on what needs to be bigger or smaller um, the opposite side or the adjacent side. Number seven we're still trying to find a ratio but all of a sudden I have a problem. Um, in fact, I notice I don't have a secant button on my calculator. So what I need to rely on is the fact that secant is equal to 1 divided by cosine. So I'm going to type 1 divided by cosine of 42.3. And what this is doing, okay, this is taking the reciprocal of this ratio, I know to find a reciprocal, I'm flipping the fraction, and a way to do that is one divided by whatever the fraction is. So I'm gonna do one divided by cosine of 42.3, and when I press enter, it gives us a value of 1.3520. And um, like I was talking about with sine and cosine, we will find that secant and cosecant are always greater than one, because all of a sudden the hypotenuse is in our numerator. There's a second way we can do this problem as well. Okay, and that's using this button right here, which is x to the negative first power. Um, we call that our reciprocal button because it is flipping our fraction. As we know, a negative exponent means I'm moving things on the other side of the denominator. So the way I would do that is cosine of 42.3 close my parenthesis, and then press my x to the negative first button. When I press enter, I notice I get the exact same value of 1.3520. It really does not matter which method you choose to use. I personally like the one divided by method better, um, just because then it's not dependent on me closing or uh, parenthesis or anything like that. Okay, so let's practice that again. Number eight says cotangent of 41.8. I know cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so I'm doing one divided by tan of 41.8. And when I press enter, I get 1.1184. Okay, our last problem of this section says cosecant of 120. I know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine so I'm going to do 1 divided by sine of 120. And when I press enter, I get 1.1547. Okay, so right now we have followed, we've really gone through half of the concepts you guys are going to have to know um, for this particular lesson. We've learned how to find the ratio if it is a trig function on our calculator. We've also learned how to find a ratio if it is one of the reciprocal trig functions. You guys also may be wondering, why do we need to know this? And as we will see in a later section, when I'm solving for an unknown side length, we can use our trig ratios to help us find that value. So that's why it's helpful to know how to put this in your calculator. And that's why we're, we are learning this in a separate lesson, so that when we get into that lesson, you guys all already know how to do that. 
So um, now we are moving on to the second part of this set of notes, and that's when we are finding an angle given a specific ratio. So if we look at number 10, it says cosine of theta equals 0.3823, theta equals blank. So the way that we are always going to find an angle is by using our sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tan inverse buttons. The way that we are going to get to cosine inverse is pressing second cosine. And notice that it says cosine inverse as the button that we are choosing. So please write cosine inverse down in your key sequence. Then I'm going to type in 0.3823, enter. And we are going to round our um, angle to the nearest tenth, which would be 67.5 degrees. So any time that I am trying to find um, an angle, and it is one of the three trig functions on our calculator, I'm going to follow this method. For example, number 11 says tan theta equals 2.3824. So I'm going to do tan inverse. And once again, I got to tan inverse by pressing second tan, 2.3824, enter, and I get 67.2 degrees. It would be very important that we're writing degrees down um, as um, we're just showing that this is in degrees versus radians. Now looking at number 12, number 12 all of a sudden we have something totally different because it says secant of theta equals 2.381. Okay, clearly I do not have a secant inverse button on my calculator. So I'm going to press cosine inverse because I know cosine and secant are reciprocals of one another. Then I'm going to do 1 divided by and type in the 2.381. Okay, what this is doing, it is taking the reciprocal of the ratio and then I can just press enter and it tells me that my answer is 65.2 degrees. Okay, once again, this is actually the method that I prefer. Um, the other way that we could do this, we could press cosine inverse. And then I could do 2.381 reciprocal button. Close my parentheses and press enter and it gives us the same exact value of 65.2 degrees. So um, once again, it does not matter which method you choose to use. Um, do whichever you think is easiest. Our last two problems are going to be very similar. Okay, so one of the key things on this is just recognizing what type of problem is it and what are the steps that you need to complete in order to do the problem correctly. So cotangent theta equals 0.8824. I know that I'm going to do tan inverse because tan inverse, um, tan is the reciprocal of cotangent. And then I'm going to do 1 divided by 0.8824. And when I press enter, it tells me that that angle would be 48.6 degrees. The last problem, cosecant theta equals 3.678. I'm going to press sine inverse. 1 divided by 3.678, and it gives me an angle of 15.8 degrees. So um, we've seen four different types of problems, two with finding ratios, two with finding angles. So I would suggest that as you are going through suggested problems, that um, you have your notes out in front of you so you can model, okay, which way did I do this specific problem. Okay, and once again, we will be using this a lot in the upcoming weeks. So if you have any questions, be sure to let me know and have a great rest of the day.